In this video, we're going to be introducing underwater acoustics using famous figures from American literature. To begin that process, we're going to start by talking about this picture of this mustachioed champion. Take a second and see if you can come up with his name off the top of your head. This is a picture of Samuel Clemens, who went by the more widely known pen name of Mark Twain. Amusingly, there's a case to be made that Mark Twain was from outer space. He was born during a year when Halley's Comet was visible and died during one too. He loved this fact and once said, I came in with Halley's Comet in 1835. It is coming again next year and I expect to go out with it. It will be the greatest disappointment of my life if I don't go out with Halley's Comet. The Almighty has said, no doubt. Now, here are these unaccountable freaks. They came together, they must go out together. Obviously, this adds up to a decent chance of him being from outer space. But while that's a fun fact, I'm more interested in talking about his pen name. Mark Twain is a nautical sounding term, which means that it refers to the practice of sounding, not that it sounds like it belongs on a boat, though, sure, I could believe that too. Sounding is a technique for measuring the depth of water, and it's used to make charts, which are maps of the ocean that have depths listed on them at points of interest. So this here is an example of a chart. Sounding has been performed in lots of ways, but one of the most common involves the tool pictured on the left. This is a piece of rope with a weight on the end and a ribbon tied off at every fathom, which is six feet. The sounding crew member would throw the weight into the water, wait for it to hit bottom and figure out which ribbon wound up at the water level, and then shout that information back to the helmsman. If the first level was by the water line, they'd yell, by the mark one. If the third ribbon was at the water line, they'd yell back, by the mark three. Take a second to guess what they'd yell for the second ribbon. The answer is, by the mark twain. So that's where the pen name comes from. This, by the way, is an ancient practice. You can see a piece of Egyptian pottery here, with a sounder at the front of the boat here, holding a pole and using that to measure depth and signaling it back to the helmsman, who's watching back here. Modern sounding techniques don't rely on ropes or poles. Instead, they rely on sonar, sound waves which are bounced off the bottom of the ocean. This has enabled remarkably detailed charts to be developed, and you can check out the NOAA website for some great examples. This measurement is really scientifically interesting, it mixes mechanical and electrical engineering, and it gives us a chance to use Fourier analysis on real data. So figuring out the basics of underwater acoustics is a great fit for E80. Now, we're going to frame our discussion of underwater acoustics around the idea that sound is a wave. To really understand how acoustics works, we need to talk about a few types of wave behaviors that should be familiar to you from optics or playing with slinkies. One is that sound waves propagate, two is that sound waves spread out, and three is that sound waves reflect off of stuff. We also need to relate sound to our understanding of Fourier analysis. The main points of this video are that sounding is an important oceanic measurement, modern sounding uses underwater acoustic measurements, and sound is a wave, so we're going to be studying wave behaviors, which include propagating, or moving around, spreading out, reflecting, and being interpreted in the frequency domain.